Today we're going to be making these, I call them for the ice cubes and I'm going to show you how to make these at home and give you the resources for it for absolutely free. So stick around to the very end so that you don't miss out on any of that. Let's get started. Since a tesseract is not a simple object, you can't just make a regular ice tray kind of mold and just expect it to pop out as easily as a priest's dong around unsupervised 11 year olds. So I decided to proceed in the most logical way I could think of and made a tesseract model in Blender. Then to make an ice mold, I made another cube and removed the tesseract tesseract's volume from it. After that, I divided this cube into parts in such a way that the tesseract could be freed from the mold easily, which in this case meant dividing the cube into six equal pyramid looking things and then I 3D printed these in resin. Okay, pro tip, resin is very toxic and if you actually eat ice cubes made in a resin mold, your penis is probably gonna fall off. This doesn't apply to women, obviously. The, the penis thing, not the toxicity thing, resin is still toxic for women. But please consider using an FDM printer with food safe filaments if you actually plan on consuming these. Anyway, after printing and curing the mold pieces, the next step is to tape five of these pieces together in such a way that they turn into sort of a cube without a top. It's important that you arrange them in this way only because arranging them in this formation actually summons Snoop Dogg for some reason. I still haven't been able to figure out why that happened, so just just follow the instructions. After that, we're gonna fill this up with water and then put the final piece on top, secure it with some tape and put it in the freezer for five to six hours. And it did not work for some reason. After closer inspection and two rounds of crying into a pillow, I found out that there are two major issues with this mold. Number one, the inside structure of the tesseract, that being the smaller cube by the way, was too delicate and broke during the demolding process. Number two, there was no rigid enclosing structure that would keep these in a perfect cube shape so the water kind of accumulated behind the mold pieces as well resulting in these mold pieces getting stuck in ice from both sides thus making it much harder for me to take the ice cube out i needed to fix these issues and to do that i thought maybe i should decrease the complexity of the tesseract and instead of it being a small hollow cube inside a larger hollow cube why don't we do a small solid cube inside a larger hollow cube i also made the edges of the outer cube twice as thick so four times the cross section area since these are square beams just to make sure that they're strong enough to not break while I'm taking it out of the mold and also so that it doesn't melt too quickly. Now because I have rather fat fingers that I can operate with about as much delicate precision as a tweaked out chihuahua trying to perform brain surgery just to be extra safe I also printed this new mold in a bigger size. I thought that should be enough to avoid breaking the cube again. Oh on top of all that I also made an enclosure this time so as to ensure that the mold pieces don't move around while freezing. Okay if you're enjoying the video so far please consider liking and subscribing it would really help me out and if you do this i promise you you won't get explosive diarrhea because of it it only happened once and to just three people it won't happen again anyway i 3d printed all of the parts cured it filled the mold with water sealed off the bottom with some cello tape and froze it when i came back from the toilet six hours later uh just to be clear i wasn't in the toilet for six hours it just so happened that i was coming out of the toilet when my six hour alarm went off anyway i was expecting this to work and I was really excited to see the results but if luck is a lady then I am menstrual cramps. I ran into two new major issues that in hindsight I should have been able to predict but given that I have about the same IQ as a prepubescent walrus I'm not ashamed to admit that I totally fucked it up. I urge you to pay close attention to this next part if you ever want to make any kind of a mold with a 3D printer not just for ice cubes. So the first problem was I totally forgot that ice expands when you freeze it. The volume increases as water cools down to zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit and changes state from liquid to solid and because of that the top piece of the mold would disconnect from the side pieces and water would fill that space completely fucking up the top half of the cube. Problem number two. I finally found out why everything was breaking while I was trying to remove it from the mold and as I had previously concluded it was not the structure being too flimsy and it wasn't my fat fingers either. It was actually because of how I was making these molds. Pause the video right now and see if you can figure out what the issue was was just comment down below and then resume the video. So the issue was layer lines. See, when you 3D print anything, regardless of whether it's FDM or SLA, objects get printed in layers, which means while you and I won't be able to see the gaps between these layers unless we look really closely, the same could not be said about how water interacts with these layer lines. The ice basically fills up these little zigzag spaces and practically welds itself to the 3D print, which means I have to pry it and use leverage to take the cube 
out and that excess force means that 9 out of 10 times I will break the cube. I was really sad at this point when I started this video. I was under the impression that it would be like a one afternoon thing but at this point I was already about a week and a half into this project and believe me what you're seeing is like 20% of the stuff I did for this video. After all of that I decided to give it one final shot to make one perfect mold to see if this was even doable for someone like me at home. So I started again and this time I decided to do it a little bit differently. To resolve the issue of ice sticking to the mold I decided to make negatives or molds of molds in blender and I printed them in resin. After curing these molds I decided to use some two-part food grade silicone that I was saving up to make a Lightning McQueen themed flashlight as my material for the mold pieces and they came out perfect. I think silicone is too thick to get into these crevices between 3d print layers so the mold pieces came out very smooth and perfect looking. Oh and I also decided to keep the resin enclosure because I figured that expansion thing might cause issues since silicone is soft and I don't want the cube to start bulging in the middle while freezing. But I did do one thing to prevent the sticking issues with the enclosure which was to cover the entire inner surface of the enclosure with sellotape. You can use other types of tape. One of my basement prisoners ate like four rolls of duct tape last week. One minute I'd cover his mouth with a piece of tape and the next minute it'd be gone. So this was the only option I had but any smooth tape will do the job. Also to counter the expansion issue I decided to make these cubes in two steps. I'll first make the bottom half so even if the water does expand it's okay it won't cause any issues with the top half of the cube because you know it doesn't exist yet. And then I would take this half out, set up the molds the same way again, fill half of it with water and then put the half cube upside down so that it now becomes the top part of the cube. Now a pro tip for this which isn't a requirement but will help you out a lot is to use ice cold water for the second half of the cube. This will ensure that the already frozen half doesn't melt too much due to heat transfer. And after the second half is done freezing we can again demold the ice cube and there you have it a 4D ice cube. And it only took me like three weeks of my life. God, I hope someone watches this video. Anyway, the 3D print files for the molds and everything else is available for free on my Patreon, link in the description, so please feel free to try and make some for yourself and, well, you're not gonna be able to show them to me, just enjoy them in private, I guess. I'm gonna go now, I have to poop. Please consider liking and subscribing if you want to. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. You and I, we are so random. You bring the darkness to the light, split the atom. I ignore the fact. That this will never last